This talk tells the story of our work on a problem called Hidden Stratification. This work was led by Jared Dunman, whose face you'll see more than a few times in this talk. I'll describe how we stumbled into this problem, how we panicked, and then how we recently made some progress in a NeurIPS 2020 paper. To be clear, we have not solved this problem, and we eagerly await a ton of new ideas in this space. With this cast of characters, some of whom are radiologists and some of whom are computer scientists, we set about understanding the problem of triaging x-rays. This was published in Radiology, the flagship clinical journal for the area. So this is a radiograph. I can't look at it and tell you anything. You need an expert for that. The problem is that many of these radiographs go unread due to a lack of available experts. It's not us who've noticed this. It's been noticed in the literature several times. Classifying radiographs as normal or abnormal is a perfect application for machine learning. Machine learning runs at machine speed, so it can quickly run on all the images. Also, luckily for us, the baseline is super low. Often, no expert looks at the image. So we asked if deep learning could help us. Now it turns out this is not an easy question. At the time, there were no benchmarks, the effects of data quality were unclear, there was no assessment of existing algorithms, and importantly, there was no feedback from the clinical community. So Jared spent a year trying to answer this question. He created a large data set of clinical labels, he evaluated the effect of label quality, and importantly, he published the work in a clinical journal. Now here's one result from his work. For deep learning aficionados, the last number there is DenseNet, CVPR best paper in 2017, and an all-around great model from Killian and our friends at Cornell. It does the best. The model at the top of the screen is the bag of visual features model and an SVM. You could have comfortably trained this model a decade or more ago. The interesting thing here is that the difference is only a few points. So a natural question is, are those differences meaningful? Well, maybe, but also maybe not. Now these eyes haunt me because they suggest that the differences may not be meaningful. Let me explain. If it were easy to write a standard non-machine learning program for a task, we should always do that. The reason we use machine learning is so that the model can pick out signals that are too difficult for us to write down. However, this means that a model will often pick up unintended signals. The more powerful the model, the more unintended signal it picks up. So powerful deep learning models may pick up more unintended signal. So what does that have to do with these eyes? Well, the way I understand the story, there were a group of researchers who were looking at determining whether they could detect the gender of a person from the iris using machine learning. They got positive results, but somehow their results didn't transfer to new data sets. They struggled to understand what was going on. Well, the upshot was a researcher established that they were actually getting gender signals from mascara. Now this feels like the model is cheating, and rightly so. We wouldn't trust this model to actually detect gender, just whether a person was wearing mascara or not. Now this example terrified me. Maybe our models are just cheating their way to get a higher score. Well, here are some examples that suggest that this cheating can occur in real medical applications. What you see here is melanoma. Below it is a visualization of where the neural net is focusing in the image. The red color indicates more intensity, and you can see the network is focusing on elements of the lesion. Here's another image and visualization pair. Here the deep learning model is not focusing on a lesion at all. It's focusing on those two purple dots. But those purple dots mean that the person is slated for surgery. Again, the model is cheating. Another example is that many great teams looked at detecting a collapsed lung using AI. Here are two images of patients with collapsed lungs. So in this task, the machine learning quality results in the literature were superhuman with an AUC of 0.87. Very exciting. But there's a problem. Now I can't tell these images apart, no matter how many times Jared tries to explain it to me, but one of these images contains a small tube called a chest drain. A chest drain is used to treat a collapsed lung. This is the same issue the model might be cheating and just recognizing the drain. Now in this case, it turns out almost a third of these images do contain a chest drain. And those chest drains, it turns out, are very easy for a neural net to spot. We know this because if you remove those images with drains, the AUC drops to 0.77. As Ben Rack tweeted out, the performance is worse than a first year resident. It's a pretty dramatic drop, and it suggests, suggests that the model was obtaining high quality by cheating. Now these examples caused the smart folks to take a look at this problem, and they identified a very general class of robustness problems. We call this class of robustness problems hidden stratification. Now, one way to think about the issue is that those images with a drain are classified much better than those without a drain. 
We think of these as the class having two subsets of images, with a drain and without, but the model does not get to see this distinction. Nevertheless, the model can cheat and get a good score by simply recognizing that one of those two subsets, say with a drain, is very highly correlated with a target class, and then perhaps largely ignoring the other case entirely. This is common in medical cases because abnormal is often abnormal in many different ways. As we saw, these errors can lead to downstream performance problems. It may be interesting to note that classically, we'd never write a feature like, if you see a purple dot, then return canceled. It would be malpractice. However, this isn't malpractice. It's just that we have a higher level software abstraction that allows these new style of bugs to creep in almost unnoticed. This led us to try to understand and develop new techniques that might prevent or mitigate hidden stratification. I like to contrast this with adversarial examples. Here the adversary is us. We're trying our best to avoid the mistake. So the hope is that this problem is simpler to solve than the general adversarial attacks problem. This was the content of our NURBS 2020 paper shown here. There's a blog that explains it better than I do in this deck. The crux of the matter is an incredibly surprising observation to me. Big Neap neural networks actually learn features that slightly separate these hidden strata, even when only trained with coarser grain labels. Somewhat fascinatingly, shallower models have trouble separating these strata. For now, this is just another wonderful mystery of deep learning. Our goal in this work is to amplify the separation to improve the robustness of the model. So we train a neural network, the bigger the better it seems. We then cluster the feature representation to estimate if there are hidden strata. We relabel the data using the clusters we found. For example, we'd hope some drain images would be in one cluster and some no drain images would be in a distinct cluster. The key insight is that our method doesn't actually need to know that one cluster contains drains and the other does not. The method needs to suspect only much more weakly that they might be distinct subclasses, and then we simply encourage the model to do well on each of those subclasses independently to hopefully make our model much more robust. Finally, we use these new labels to train a model using a standard distributionally robust training scheme. Although the method is super simple, on the worst performing subclass, this simple strategy improves the quality of our model by up to 22 points. Inspired by our experience with chest drains, we developed a simple theoretical model. In this model, we show that without access to the true subclass labels, our algorithm has the same asymptotic sample complexity as if we knew those true subclass labels perfectly. To be clear, this isn't a complete solution, but it demonstrates that there is something we can do about hidden stratification. In this talk, I described our work that led to our identification of hidden stratification. We are at first depressed that these deep models may pick up on unintended signal, which leads to a kind of cheating. However, at the end, we saw that there is some hope. Bigger models seem to learn better representations that allow us to mitigate some of the effects of hidden stratification. I hope this is just the beginning of making these models much more robust to these accidental errors. Thank you for your time and attention.